When you look at Tim Anderson's overall career numbers, there is absolutely nothing special, really. He's a career below average hitter, never had much pop or drove in a ton of runs. Everything really is average or below average, no matter what number you focus on. But just like most things in the world, it's not that black and white. Tim Anderson was in fact a star at a certain point in time for a couple different reasons, it has had one of the harshest drop-offs you'll ever see. Really quick, I'm trying to get to 140,000 subscribers before 2024, so if you enjoy the content and haven't hit that button yet, consider doing so. Thank you. Tim Anderson's come-up story is pretty badass. He was born in Alabama to incredibly unstable parents. In fact, before Tim even left his mother's womb, his father, Tim Sr., was arrested on drug charges and ended up serving the first 15 years of his son, Tim Jr.'s life, in prison. Meanwhile, once Tim was born, his mom, who was already a mother of four, wasn't able to be able to take care of a fifth, leading Tim to be raised by her biological sister, so his aunt, his uncle, and their three kids. Despite his dad being in prison throughout the first half of his life, Tim's grandfather would take him to visit his dad often so they could have a relationship. And when it came to sports, Tim was never the biggest baseball guy. He played some Little League baseball and then didn't play again until his junior year of high school as he was always more into basketball, prioritizing that. When he did get back into baseball halfway through high school though, Anderson balled out. He was a really good hitter, eventually deciding he was likely too short to pursue basketball professionally and so he'd go on to play baseball at a community college in Mississippi. And he balled out there too. In his freshman year, didn't get any draft interest from any MLB teams in 2012, but after doing even better in his sophomore year, he was able to commit to the University of Alabama, where he wouldn't even play because he would then be drafted in the 2013 MLB draft by the Chicago White Sox, and off his professional baseball career began. About three years later, after working his way through the minor league system, Tim Anderson was called up to the big leagues, and wasn't necessarily anything special. Not that he needed to be, being a 23-year-old rookie, but the White Sox still saw enough potential in him to discuss and agree to a six-year contract extension worth $25 million with team options for the 2023 and 2024 seasons, which will come back to be important later, but for now, Tim Anderson was a young up-and-coming name for the White Sox, and someone who would hopefully be a part of a winning dynasty in the south side of Chicago. Unfortunately, he struggled pretty badly in 2017 along with 2018. He was just simply a bad hitter, and it's not like it wasn't a good sample size. Anderson Anderson was playing almost every game, but just wasn't a good player. 2019 then came around, and that's when things changed. 2019 was Tim Anderson's official coming out party, and no, I don't mean it in that way, you dirty mind. He was awesome that year, his first official good year numbers-wise, and it was more than just good, as he'd go on to win the American League batting title as he'd hit to a 335 batting average, which was actually the best in all of baseball that year, not just the American League. So there was that, and he also was a ton of fun. He was flashy, he didn't care about the unwritten rules. He was one of those guys, most notably flipping his bat after crushing a home run off of Royals' Brad Keller, who was notably pissed off and bothered by that, and from that point on, Brad Keller has been one of baseball's biggest losers, in my opinion. He gives up a bomb to Anderson, looks like he's going to cry just for Anderson simply being pumped up about it, and instead of striking him out the next time Anderson came up to the plate, he'd throw at and hit him with a pitch. Just total loser behavior by Keller. The whole thing was incredibly stupid and could have been avoided if Keller decided to try and get Anderson out as payback rather than hitting him. But then you have to remember that Brad Keller absolutely sucks at pitching, just straight up stinks. Getting Anderson out wasn't a very likely scenario, so I guess you gotta factor that part in. This happened very early on in the 2019 season, with Anderson going on to make some pretty interesting comments regarding what he saw himself as, saying that he kind of feels like today's Jackie Robinson admitting that that's a big thing to say, but going on to add that he feels like he's getting to a point to where he needs to change the game. And what he meant by that was to change the whole unwritten rule fun barrier thing, and he had a point. I mean, the dude was just thrown at for simply being excited for hitting a home run. Also saying, I'm bringing something to baseball that's never been brought, as far as the swag. I love fashion and just being different, and bringing black culture to baseball and doing it in a different way, because today's game is boring. After the bat flip, a lot of people who don't watch baseball, they actually gave me feedback, like, man, if this is going on in baseball, I better watch it, end quote. Now, there was some truth and also some ridiculous stupidity to Tim Anderson's overall comments here, 
For one, to put himself in the same sentence as Jackie Robinson is beyond stupid. No black baseball player or athlete in today's world has to go through even a fraction of what Jackie Robinson himself had to go through in order to change not just baseball, but the world. Jackie Robinson was a big part of changing baseball for the better, but also a vital part of the civil rights movement as a whole. So yes, it's weird for Anderson to bring up Jackie, and it was also ignorant to say that he was bringing swag to baseball that had never been brought before. Hello? Ken Griffey Jr.? So those are the dumb things, but as dumb and ignorant as they were, like I said, Anderson did have a point regarding his role to play in making baseball less boring and more open to showing personality. Nobody should be getting a baseball thrown out their body for simply enjoying the fact that they hit a home run. So that was that. Anderson goes on to have a great year and win the batting title, has another good year in the shortened 2020 season, helping get the White Sox to the postseason, with 2021 being the more legit postseason year, with Tim Anderson once again being one of the best players becoming an all-star for the first time, hitting over 300 for the third year in a row, while also helping lead the Sox to 93 wins in a division title. 2022 then came around, Anderson came out the gate hot, hitting real well in the first two months of the season, but in May of that year, Anderson became involved in some more drama. After tensions had been brewing between him and Josh Donaldson for really weeks, who is now on the Yankees, the benches eventually cleared between the two teams. No fight happened, but it was what was said after the game that got everyone talking. Tim Anderson revealed to the media that Josh Donaldson had been mocking him and referring to him as Jackie, like Jackie Robinson. And of course, in the current climate we live in, a lot of what people see in situations like this are a white man verbally attacking a black man and referring to him as another black man. So, so in comes the famous racist word in accusation, which is exactly what Tim Anderson said about Donaldson, that what he said was disrespectful and racist. Donaldson's explanation was that it was nothing more than a joke, referring to when Tim referred to himself as the modern day Jackie Robinson claiming that he said it to him in years past, just joking around and that he wasn't trying to be racist, and he was just talking about the interview in which he called himself Jackie Robinson, going on to apologize by saying he wasn't trying to get Anderson mad by being disrespectful at all, feeling like it was just a running joke between the two. According to Anderson, though, he told Donaldson to stop calling him Jackie back in 2019, saying, I won't speak to you, you won't speak to me. If that's how you're going to refer to me, I knew he knew exactly what he was doing. At the end of the day, is Josh Donaldson a hateful, prejudiced, racist person? Obviously not. He has a long history of playing with a lot of fire and edge to him, just like Tim Anderson, along with a long history of other benches clearing situations and tense, heated arguments with other players throughout his career. He obviously he was just kind of being an asshole like he has been to other players and in Tim's case he used the Jackie reference. That's really all there was to it, at least from what I could tell, and everyone moved on. But this was when the downfall began. Not for Josh Donaldson, I mean his downfall kind of already was going on by that point and would continue, unless he catches fire on a new team in 2024. But after this whole incident in 2022, Tim Anderson hasn't been the same since. I'm not blaming it on the actual incident, I'm just using it as a checkpoint for when to start looking at Tim Anderson's downfall with the White Sox. So leading up to the incident, Anderson was hitting 346 on the year with an OPS near 900. Elite stuff. The Donaldson Yankees incident then happens, Anderson ends up actually only playing 46 games the rest of the entire season due to injury issues, and in those 46 games, had his batting average go down to 270, which isn't bad, but his OPS suffered big time as he hit to a 632 OPS in his final 46 games which is bad. So what looked like a promising start to the year ended in a crappy way as the White Sox ended up missing out on the postseason, finishing with a 500 record just a year after winning the division. Not good. But 2023 was bound to be better, right? 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 No. In 2023, the White Sox as a team were absolute garbage. So bad to the point where it got pathetic, honestly. And unfortunately, Tim Anderson played a big part in that. Not only was Tim Anderson bad in 2023, not only was he a terrible hitter, but he was one of, if not statistically, the worst hitter in baseball for qualifying hitters. He played in 123 games, the same amount as he did in 2021, but unlike 2021, where he put up good numbers, Anderson's OPS was 582, which is beyond atrocious. His OPS plus was 60, 
100 is league average, so that tells you everything. I remember when Fernando Tatis Jr. first made his name known to not just Padres fans, but to the entire baseball world for how talented he is, and I also remember people bringing up the fact that the White Sox actually had Tatis in their organization, but traded him in 2016 for James Shields, saying that the White Sox had to be kicking themselves. But I also, also remember thinking and saying, myself, the White Sox may have traded Tatis, but they have Tim Anderson as their shortstop. They're going to be just fine. Skip ahead to 2023, and Tatis isn't even a shortstop anymore, winning a Gold Glove and Platinum Glove award this past year. So the White Sox could have had Tatis in right and Anderson at short. Now they just have Anderson at short, and Anderson is a terrible player now. So they literally have the worst scenario possible. Again, 40 points below league average hitting-wise with his OPS+, plus, but not only that, this past season, 2023, Tim Anderson hit just a single home run. One. Uno. That's it. It's not like Anderson was ever a power hitter, but one home run is crazy, and clearly something was just not right with him. He did deal with some injuries, like a sprained left knee, along with right shoulder soreness and some off-the-field stuff. When you really look into Anderson as a person, let's just say he's no saint. Now, none of us are. None of us are perfect. We all make mistakes and poor choices in life. But you cannot deny that the issues Anderson was having off the field with his wife may have played a mental toll onto his ability tacked onto the physical toll of his injuries. Anderson, who was married and has two kids with his wife, cheated on her, seemingly with multiple women, being confirmed to have fathered a child with one of them. Tim did come out and talk about what he did, saying he and his wife went to therapy and are working through their marriage. In my opinion, I think Anderson's wife is a total idiot for staying with him, and Anderson is a total idiot for staying with her. In Tim's case, how are you going to cheat on your wife, have a literal kid with another woman, and then stay with your wife and try quote-unquote working it out? Sick relationship goals. Anyone would kill to have that situation. And in his wife's case, if you get cheated on and decide to stay in the relationship, you don't respect yourself, and that goes for any woman or man in that situation. If you even think about cheating on your significant other, let alone actually commit the act of infidelity, don't be in a relationship with them. And if you don't think you can be faithful to anybody, just don't date or marry anybody. And if you are a victim of getting cheated on, leave and don't stay with that person. Respect yourself and move on. I know this is an I talk relationships, but I mean, Jesus Christ. I just feel like I'm doing a disservice if I don't at least try to educate and enlighten some of you when topics like this come up. Too many people date, get married, and then are just unfaithful. So now you're just living your life with someone who you're lying to, or they're lying to you, and it's just such a waste of time and so stupid. Okay, anyway, back to the main point. At the end of the day, Tim Anderson's personal life isn't our business, but I'm sure his personal life at least somewhat impacted his mental game. He was beyond atrocious at the plate, literally putting up the worst numbers for really any qualified hitter in baseball. I'm not joking. He was that bad. And then Jose Ramirez entered the chat. In early August, during a game between the White Sox and Guardians in Cleveland, Jose Ramirez would slide headfirst into second base and into Tim Anderson for a double. Ramirez took exception with Anderson's tag, feeling like it was too unnecessarily rough, getting up and the two started to yell at one another with Ramirez pointing in Anderson's face. At this point, Anderson said screw it, dropped his glove, and decided to challenge Ramirez to a fight straight up boxing style, only for Ramirez to then connect on a right hook to Anderson's face, knocking him to the ground in one of the more iconic baseball fights we'll ever see. They're fighting! They're swinging! Yet also one of the more embarrassing fights you'll ever see for one of the sides involved, with Tim Anderson of course being that side. So you have a player who's been terrible all year long, can't hit for shit, acts tough, and challenges a shorter guy like Jose Ramirez to a fight, someone who's never been involved in any sort of on-field drama like this, only to then get knocked to the ground and then suspended six games. After the game, Jose Ramirez said that Anderson had been disrespecting the game for a while now. A couple weeks later, Anderson came out with a statement apologizing, still throwing some shade Cleveland's way, but there is nothing he could say at this point to really get anyone on his side regarding this situation in particular. Gotta just take the L and move on. And so he did, finishing up his terrible season on a White Sox team that was just as bad, and as soon as the MLB offseason began, the Tim Anderson White Sox era ended. Remember when I said the Sox had options for 2023? in 2024 for the contract they signed Anderson to back in 2016? Well, the team would decline that option for 2024, making him a free agent. The White Sox YouTube channel even went as far as to make a thank you to Anderson video to officially say goodbye. 
and off he will now go to spread his wings and find another home to get his career back on track. Whatever that team may be, Tim Anderson has had a very eventful last four to five years or so. Lots of drama on and off the field, lots of success, but success that turned into failure. Terrible failure, going from an all-star to one of the worst hitters in baseball who's getting embarrassed in fights that he himself started, and now has his own team dropping and moving on from him. Tim Anderson is an interesting guy. His backstory and come up is pretty inspiring and cool. He's done some good on and off the field, like for charity and also helping make baseball fun by the way he played when he was good, but he's also done some not so great stuff on and off the field. I honestly do hope for the best regarding this man. I hope he revamps his career and becomes an all-star again, hits some more homers, flips his bat, and makes cowards like Brad Keller cry. But as of now, the current day and where we stand, his White Sox days are done. There's not much to be excited about regarding Tim Anderson as a player or as a person, and he's going to have to prove himself in 2024.